Joe likes Scorsese and Ranan is Jewy. It's Joe and Ranan talk movies. Well, no, let's talk about. Uh, well, let's talk ambulance because we both saw that. Yeah, we're doing both. We're doing a big and action Bob and movie. And Carol and Ted and Alice. And a, and a movie from the seven, or 60, 69. 69 that. But a lot of our people are buffs. That's you true. You think you're a man of the people, but you don't respect our viewers because our viewers. Love Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. I think they're more buffs. Like you got to check out Christopher Nolan's early snuff porn or whatever that he made. I don't know if they're like you got to see Fight Club, the deleted scenes or right. whatever. I don't know if they're like you got to see this Elliot Gould movie from the seventies. But maybe he was nominated not- for Academy Award is Breakout Role. Breakout Role. All right, let's talk. Great let's talk film. about it. Which one, which one are you talk? Let's talk about Ambulance first because we fight. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, yeah. Let's talk about Ambulance, which you liked. I can't even believe it. <laughs> I can't even believe that anybody liked this film, let alone a Tarakovsky reader or whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck his name is. Kat, Katsawamsky. I'm just naming hockey Fred players. Fred Shakespeare. And- you love Ulf Samuelson plays. Uh, all right, so let's like talk George about- George was the architect. I didn't, take, I didn't take notes on Ambulance because I was watching it as, like a, as a goof. I should have been taking notes because there's so many moments- that outra- a few of them I think I can remember, but it's so stupid. And I know I'm trying to be less cynical. Yes. And I should be less cynical and just be a guy that gets a big tub of popcorn and fucking watches porn and loves ambulance because they're, they're it's exploding and, and yeah. fireworks and whatever. But it's so stupid and it's so like PC horseshit that we're always talking about. And I hate to sound like this guy, but I can predict the whole movie. By everybody's race and gender. And I hate to be sound be like this Fox News guy. Right. I'm like, I know everything that's going to happen based on the casting. You knew what was going to happen at the end? I can't surprising. remember what happens at the end. <laughs> I mean, look. What I, happens at the end? I, I can't I even remember. Bother. I don't know. Apparently, I'm not bothered. It's just I, like, okay, great. I see. I mean, I get that. Like, yeah, I get that. It's like diverse. But <laughs> to me, it's not like a woke thing. To me, it's just like. Uh, not woke, but PC Let's get all whatever. those groups of people in the movie theater. <laughs> it's, I get, but it's not just that. Yeah. It's like, okay, white guy evil. He's the bad guy for sure. Yeah. The, he's got a black brother. The black brother is is good at heart and soul and he's a yeah. family guy and he's going to be the great guy who tries to save it and we'll yeah. save it. We know it. We know it for sure. Well, yeah. And then there's the Latino woman who's not afraid of nothing and she's tougher and her partner, this white guy nerd, he's just like, whoa, whoa, this blood and she's like, shut up, you pussy. I want a taco. I don't care because I'm a woman. At one point, she pushes over a SWAT team member <laughs> He's like full regalia, the machine gun. She just shoves him, and he's like, "Ah, yeah, I guess." A hundred and ten pound woman is coming through, the toughest in the movie. Yeah, I guess that's more of, to me. That's more of just like the action movie cliche where the woman's always way tougher than she actually could be. You yeah, know I, I mean? guess so. I just I like, and also it's like we talk about, I want some reality. But the, the Mexicans are bad. That didn't make you happy that the fucking cholos were all evil. It's not that I want happy. <laughs> That's it's not that I'm like, no, no. I mean, like, I'm not opposed to there being a. It's just I know what it's gonna be. Yeah, There's but- no twisting or, or turning because I know because you're not allowed to make so and so evil. Yeah. Or bad. Well. I guess so, but to me, Jake Gyllenhaal is a likable performance, so it's not like he's like someone you're supposed to hate. You know what I mean? No, but his what you think is likable is just stupid. He's just like that was crazy. He has like those I, silly lines. At one I point, he's it. hanging off an ambulance, holding on to the lady. Like, how is he on the? I hate action movies. I just hate it. I'm like, why would he? Do how you is have he on this no ambulance? No suspension of disbelief. Can there be? Can I can disbelief suspend even a second. Well, I like Princess Bride. I, I want it to That's be a full fantasy. With, exactly. <laughs> If I want it to be full ridiculous or not. Yeah. I guess for me, the context was... The I sound like a white supremacist. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know, what I, you know what I mean. I actually... It did not bother me. I get annoyed by this shit sometimes, but it didn't... Like, here's the thing about it. It's like, I know Michael Bay is not woke. I mean, I feel like he fucking, like made like Megan Fox like be in a bikini just to like audition her. I, I know he's like a not woke guy. You know what I mean? Well, whatever he is. I mean, whoever <laughs> wrote it, he's working yeah. within these. Pre- it's not woke is not the right word. I, I don't know what the right word is. And I'm using like cliche word. Yeah. But it's just the thing of like the woman who's so tough. Yeah. So tough. And, and just like. It doesn't even make sense that she's not even human. Like she goes up to the little kid who's like literally yeah. in, in, Paled, and the girl's like, "Hi, I'm scared. 
I'm nervous. Like the yeah. five year old girl is impaled. Yeah. My five year old nephew, fucking his, the, the, <laughs> we we turn his cartoons off to watch a game. He's like sobbing for three hours. This girl's impaled and just like I'm nervous. I'm a little nervous right now. I'm feeling <laughs> a little stressed. I'm about to say goodbye. <laughs> and then the writing doesn't make sense because she has to be. Tough. She's. Yeah. It's so cliche. Like not cliche. Just bad. I'm the tough as nails, gritty woman yeah. who's showing the man how to be tough. So they write it that way, where she helps the impaled girl and goes, and the guy's like this. Of course, the man has to be like, ooh, I can't, even though he's a paramedic. Whoa. And she goes, I'm hungry. You want to get a taco? And they're trying to be like, get it? Even though she just saw a kid impaled, she wants a taco. But then at the end. She's like sentimental and is like, oh my God, this girl that I saw earlier and I love, but earlier you were unfazed by her All right, death. My, you see my point? My, yes, I see your point and my defense is going to ruin all my intellectualism credibility, but here's my comeback. She's hot. She's so fucking hot. I don't even find her that hot. What? She's I mean she's attractive. She's hot. I do think her like makeup's perfect and she's like an a, in an ambulance. That's the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sweating, running. Oh, and then she gives double fingers to a guy with a machine gun at her. She's there's hot. a psychopath there's a psychopath, Jake Gyllenhaal, murder psychopath, who's got mach- a machine gun and she's like this. Fuck you. And I'm like this. What? She's not afraid of this guy. Also, he gets, she sprays him with um a fi- exhaust, whatever yeah. the fuck, fire extinguisher. He's covered in it the next scene is completely gone I mean, he's somehow what is he he's just like this like a cartoon and there's no it's not a documentary left. it's not like no one's going to but it doesn't for like, that bother you I think there's some I mean it, it's a movie that suppo- knows it's ridiculous like it's ridiculous so you always say this you're like it's always a movie. What makes it a movie that knows it's ridiculous? It like th- the fact that they're doing the surgery in the back of the ambulance that, while they're being chased by. Which I think scene, is a great part. That scene, I think they were like, okay, this will be funny. This is this is where we differ. I I don't I hate a dumb movie like Jurassic, the the latest Jurassic World thing. But I like a movie that doubles down on its stupidity and is like kind of like Joyce. To me, I, I I thought a couple things. It's in context, right? Michael Bay has made some of the most soulless. Movies that make me just want to like kill, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like it's just all CGI Transformers. That shit depresses me. And finally, he made like a a, a '90s action movie. It's like kind of a little flashback to Speed. Yes, and that's some fun. And that's I find if I find that fun. So just in context of all the other shit he's made, I'm like, finally he's doing something a little human. And I mean, this is where we disagree. I think Jake Gyllenhaal, and this is where I mean, sometimes I hate over the top. Like, I think Paul Dano in um, Batman sucks. Like, because it's not fun over the top. It's just, like, bad. Yeah, I d- disagree completely. But Jake Gyllenhaal, his over the top in this, he's having fun. He has some funny lines. I think it's a fun character. I just think he's not written well, but I think Gyllenhaal is the best. I mean, you yeah. know me. Gyllenhaal is my favorite actor. I'd love to meet him and work with him as I'm in film. I guess I think, look, myself. look, you're a racist and hate Jake Gyllenhaal, but, like, I think, uh, I guess I just think Jake Gyllenhaal is, I think he's had fun in this. And I, I the herpes line killed me. So bad. Well, so herp- stupid. I don't know if you know this, but herpes is very personal now in my life, and you can't understand that. But like, uh- it's <laughs> such a silly line. I hate when people are like making jokes. Is it a dire situation or isn't it? <laughs> are they having fun or are they in danger? And they never feel in danger because you know they're just gonna keep somehow getting around all this stuff. The character, the guy. Do you know that guy? The main searching for them guy, the FBI guy with the hat who's just like a coach. Yeah, he's great from No Country. From No Country. Yeah, great actor. Hell's bells. They even shot the dog. He that character is just so over the top, and then of course he's with the the other woman, who's just the other woman who's like I guess it's supposed to be like hot. She's another brash one well, who's she's like not, she's certainly not hot. She's supposed to be like I mean like hot stuff, oh, you know. Oh, like yeah. she's like she's another one who's like oh shut up, I don't take nothing, not with me at the helm. <laughs> like every woman has to be like this tough, like oh shit, I'm afraid yeah. of her. I just think it's like also, why silly. What percentage of women are you meeting as that's like this? Hey, shut the fuck up, you queer. Also, why don't, the back. why don't they get a, like they got, I mean, she's fine, but why don't they just get a comedian for that role? It seems like if, if you're not getting someone hot. I think she's an Australian comedian. Oh, is she? Oh, or maybe mind. not. Maybe I, I'm not. fucked up. If she's a comedian, that's fine. Yeah. I don't know. But um, it just felt like, oh, here's the other woman that's going to make no mistakes, no, no faults, just yeah. tough, tough as nails, telling the guys what's what. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I thought they had some funny banter. I don't know. I, I, 
I don't know. But here's the thing. I mean, maybe you have some valid points, but you also... it's just Maybe. Like, it's maybe like, I do. Well, you don't like action movies. And so it's like, I feel like we're arguing. I'm like trying to tell you that I like apples and you, you're allergic to apples. Like, you don't like you don't like action movies. Did I talk about this before, about your stupid line? I, I, I want to talk about this oh, in the podcast. Geez. We're talking about the the uh, the assistant, which I think is great. And you, this is a quote from Ronan. Well, that's the one movie I might be wrong about. <laughs> that is a quote from this man. There's only one movie I might be wrong about. Other than that, just 100% right about every movie. Ambulance is the best movie of the year. You're right. I think, yeah. I mean, well, I, I meant, I didn't mean in all time. Look, I used to love American Beauty, Fight Club. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Well, someday you're going to do a retrospective on Ambulance. <laughs> and what, what is the thing with the twisty fucking like... I know. It's, it's he, what is that? What is that a, supposed to a, represent It's a something? new drone camera. Oof. But it is... A bit ostentatious because it just fucking like it has no purpose in the movie. It just like zooms around. Sometimes it's kind of fun. I think it. I think it would be better in theaters. That moment. Yeah. I had a friend who saw it in theaters and it really felt like a ride when that happened. But it is like, like a camera should serve the purpose of the movie, mm -hmm. and it is just zooming away in the sky, like away from the <laughs> no movie. No reason. It's it like make any sense. it's like the actors over here. It's like zooming. Yes. The whole screen is flipping. It's for like no the, reason. It's like the action movie version of like you see a Terrence Malick movie like Thin Red Line and. Like the actors are acting, and he's just filming like a pelican on a tree, right. like somewhere else. Like, uh, but yeah, the camera is definitely like the movie's over here. Right. It, it's just so good. There's another scene where they're they're driving, and of course, you know, I was in Iraq, so he gets to he knows how to drive or whatever. He's driving, and then he comes up to a dead end. He's being chased by the Los Angeles yeah. Police Department. He comes up to a dead end and just slams in the brakes and every police car, like Blues Brothers, which you hate, which is tonally supposed to be hilarious and over the top and uh -huh. funny, but you think there's no jokes, uh -huh. but you think ambulance is hilarious and perfect. It makes Girlfriend, literally you have no all sense. These, uh, these grievances you bring up. It makes no <laughs> sense that you're like, Blues Brothers has no jokes. It's like and I'm my like, wife in bed at night. It's what you said in 1962. <laughs> the jokes, you're not married. The jokes in ambulance are the jokes in Blues Brothers, but they're not joking. But anyways, he stops at a dead end and like seven LAPD cruisers go shooting past him over a cliff. And I'm like, they don't, they're not familiar with the road they're on. They're just like, oh! like why would they be driving over the road? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it's also, just give me some sense. Well, it's also funny, like they're worried like if he kills a cop, he'll go to jail. So they're trying to save that guy. But clearly he's killed a lot of people with that devastation. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. By the way, the cop who's having surgery done on him, he like comes to at some point and he's like I mean, perfectly clear. He just looks great. He's like, what's going on up here? He had like his spleen removed by hand 10 minutes earlier. He's shot and he's like, what? I'm like, but that put part some is, makeup on him. You're a $450 million budget. But that part Get is- some makeup. The, the operation part is great. It's fine. It's, it's great. Whatever. And, and I, honestly, at the end of the day, I think Jake Gyllenhaal is fun. And I think their conflict, I mean, you're going to hate me now. I think it has some interesting things to say about loyalty. <laughs> I guess so. I can't like even they, remember the conflict. Well, what he's is like it? the brothers and like Jake Gyllenhaal is really ready to die for him. But the other guy realizes Jake Gyllenhaal is a bad guy, so has to betray him at the end. It's actually an interesting, I'll say it's kind of an interesting conflict. Because Jake Gyllenhaal, at one point you think he's going to betray his brother. And mm -hmm. then he actually does it and kills all those guys to save his brother. Say like Jake Gyllenhaal is ready to die for the other guy, right? But yeah, the we've other never guy, seen that in the film. But, but the other, well, what's interesting <laughs> is the other guy. I forget the actor's name. The other guy, he um, he's in uh, Ca Caddyshack, Candyman. Candyman is he Candyman? No, he's not Candyman. He's like he's he's better in that movie than he is in you this sure movie. Sure, he's not Candyman. I can't remember Candyman. I think he's the guy, the photographer, looking for Candyman. Okay. But does he end up being Candyman? No, I don't think so. No, then he's not Candyman. Uh, have you seen the original Candyman? It's terrifying. Of course I saw the a original black guy. I saw it in the theater. It was terrifying. <laughs> a black guy just in the parking lot. Um, um, but uh, joke. But anyway, so I think so. there's this loyalty, but then he betrays Jake Schoenhall at the end because he realizes he's a bad guy. So it is. It, I actually think it says some interesting things about loyalty and honor. Yeah, I guess And I so. think Jake Schoenhall is fun, and i just like to see a movie where actual... I'm 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 a little biased. I like non CGI movies. So when I see that, when I see Top Gun, I recognize they're a little dumb. But I'm just excited to see a real car, a real plane. You know what I mean? Bring back. I guess, that. but you can do that with a real script also, and not like we're shooting from over here. What? Yeah, well, that here. part was a little, What is going on? That with part's the camera? a little silly. It's just like it's ridiculous, and all, I I just I I can't stand a movie. 
Where again, there's t- like one of my favorite Sicario is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, and the woman is very tough. Right. But when it comes down to it, she ain't as tough as this fucking psychotic man. Yeah. This movie's it's just like the woman's like, Kah, fuck you, and the guy's like, whoa, I'm sorry. Whoa. It's like yeah. there's a guy on the police force who's like, shut up, bitch, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> I guess and she's it, like, yeah. Jesus Christ. All I right, guess you're it's right. like expectations. I do not go into Michael Bay movies thinking there'll be like well, emotional depth. I guess. But you, you know? just said there's emotional well, conflict or whatever. Well, there's shit. interesting between them two, but with, I assume the woman's gonna just be like a tough woman without any really like i just think he kind of does that each time it's just I, like a megan fox type well it always comes back to what i'm saying i just i like movies that feel real to me yeah which uh, the next one we're about to talk about my choice we'll leave about three minutes for my movie which i which i love so i'm I, you know I'm, I, it's not like i hated that movie but yeah in conclusion though i, I don't think ambulance should like i'm not gonna say it got robbed at the oscars next year you know it probably I mean? will win unless a, <laughs> i'll tell you which actors are gonna get nominated unless so. there's a <laughs> <laughs> of the category for like best drone best unnecessary drone footage in a movie um, it will not surprise me if it gets the best picture the way they set it up a nomination i mean no that's insane it's not insane the way they set it up where there can be 10 nominees now oh that's and they true. want to include big budget box office movies and it's about it's about how black people and white people could be related <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's 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 like get it look at this he's black and he's white and they're related <laughs> And people are like, whoa, that's very good. Thank yeah. God. Uh, <laughs> but that'll, that'll solve all our problems. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but uh, yes. But in, anyway, I liked it. You didn't. But let's talk about the other. Movie. I think it might get nominated for Best Picture. That's crazy. I'm just going to say. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't think it's that crazy. Well, you want to put money on it? I don't want to put money on it. But <laughs> I think, I mean, what's it called? Got nominated. Dark Knight Rises. Oh, no. That was the reason they made it the way it was. What? The Dark Knight is the movie that like made them like, which I think is much better than Ambulance. But yeah, yeah, I mean, Dark Knight probably in hindsight should have been nominated. I mean, Green yeah. Book won Best Picture. I know. Do you but think Green Book is better than no? But Ambulance? I think it's a different kind of bad movie that the Oscars like. I know, but they I don't, think they're trying to get movies that sold. Tickets. I know, but I still don't think they respect action movies that are. Oh, it didn't sell any yeah. tickets. What do you think the, budget was? the budget, I would. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess two hundred million. Uh, I'm gonna guess ninety million. Forty million was the budget. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know how hard it is to sell tickets in the box office. I'm gonna say I think your movie beat it. So. I'm gonna say twenty-eight million. Uh, nine million. Fifty-one million. So it's made money. But okay. Oh, but that's a flop. yeah, yeah, three million dollars. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, right. Well, I think it's really like a movie like that's not really streaming, so it's just theaters, right? Yeah. Well, it's streaming. I watched it at home. Oh yeah, it's I guess, on HBO now or whatever. Yeah, but it's not. Oh um, no, I really I rented it. But it's not streaming, like what do you call it? Where like HP, it's like property of. Yeah, no, it's just a rentable movie. So I think like yeah. eventually it might be on something, but it doesn't. It doesn't have the rights to a streaming service, like um, you know, like. Roma did or the Irishman you know right. what I mean so I wonder I feel like those movies are probably gonna like typically fail now besides like Top Gun what are those socks it looks like a bowling pin uh, I bought them they're uh, airline themed socks I was staying in a <laughs> I was staying at a uh, this awful hotel uh, next to the airport and they themed the hotel like an airport so you're just the one at JFK yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's like people pay lots of money for I that. I fucking hate that place because you're just in an, another inconvenient place like the place. like the, No one wants to feel like they're at an airport. No, I guess not. Yeah, it's just, uh, but anyway, so yeah, that's where I got these. I ran out of socks. Um, that sucks. All right, so I'll talk about another movie. This is the one Joe suggested. We saved it for last, best for last. Yeah. Bob, yeah you're let, you're, you want the audience to just leave right now. <laughs> Bob, Ted, and Carol, and Alice. No, it's Bob and Carol, Ted and Alice. Have some respect <laughs> for the film. The first film by Paul Mazursky. Who I love. I love Paul Mazursky. I love Enemy, the love story. If you haven't seen that, go watch that. It's impossible to find. You have to order on Amazon <laughs> for 300 bucks. But I had not seen his first movie, Bob, 
Carol, Carol, Ted and Alice. Ted and Alice. Bob and Carol, Ted and Alice. This was a Louis wreck, which I think is my favorite movie that he's ever recommended. Oh, really? Yeah, this is the only one that I've ever enjoyed, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, he re recommended uh, the prequel to Fantasia, a black and white cartoon from 1912. You're saying he recommended a movie about people having sex without morals? And he, um, <laughs> no, they have morals. I know, I'm joking. Um, so does he. I, uh, so... I got notes. That's why I'm going to the phone. Yeah, I loved it. I, uh, you know, I always worry sometimes with like, I'll be honest, the 70s movie, I mean, let, we can call this a 70s movie. It's 69, but it feels like just a 70s. You know, 69, it 89. It feels like the 70s, too? Because it so, feels yeah. like 60s. Really? They're all in flower. They're all fucking. I guess it feels like the beginning of the 70s. I feel like I the, guess so. the, not, the, I the year before the decade is always part of the decade. But a lot of 70s movies, there are ones that are great. And there are ones that everyone tells you a masterpiece, and it, you turn it on, and they're very uninviting a lot of times. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're watching the dailies of a movie, like no one's edited it. Right, It's yes. like the audio's bad. They don't ever, they do, they always, 70s movies do a really bad job of like highlighting the main character, so you're just watching a bunch of people talking, and you have to like, you know, this movie kind of started that way a little. It sounds like you're describing Altman, <laughs> who's your favorite. I know, but Altman is different with Altman in some ways. I don't know how to explain it, but like- but uh, that is a good description of Altman, though. <laughs> There's a bunch of people, it's crazy, you don't know who the main character is, they're all talking <laughs> over each other. I know, but- I But he's the best at it. But he's the best at it, yeah. Um, but, uh, so it kind of starts that way, you're like, you don't really know, it's like a little uninviting in the beginning. I mean, not totally uninviting, there are tits. It's tits. Right there are tits right I knew away. I could get you I know. by being like, you can jerk off to this film, which is the only time you were like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a Philistine? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> like, uh, someone who's not cultured. I, I guess, guess I'm, I'm not a Philistine. Yeah, I guess you just proved I'm a Philistine. I'm <laughs> Philistine is my accountant. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, so it starts out with tits. Great. Love the tits. <laughs> Got to love really the tits. Really great tits. Great tits. And yeah. that, by the way, I like, like, Natalie Wood, the I hottest. Mean, yeah. Natalie Wood. She's in her underwear, yeah. her panties. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it is like the fact that I didn't jerk off while watching it. Shows a level of self-discipline I didn't think I had. No, it shows you how good the script is. Yeah, I guess that's true. Good testament to Paul Bezersky. I wanted to jack off, but I was like, I want to know what happens next. But yeah, she is like insane. Like the greatest, before we talk about the merits of the movie, which are many. I mean, this is a merit of the movie. Well, it's a merit of Natalie Wood. The greatest legs in the business. Great legs, great bum, great makeup. And, and, and Diane Cannon is great too, and she's fantastic in the film. Very attractive. Do you find Diane Cannon attractive? She's attractive, yeah. She has those fake eyelashes that I hate. I find her so gross. Gross? Yeah. I find her so, like, I'm like, the fact that Elliot Gould is hesitating about fucking Natalie Wood at the end, I'm like, no, no, no. It, you know. That's well, he's make. hesitating because he's married. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, he's not hesitating because she's not attractive. <laughs> that's true. But I don't know. But Natalie Wood, look, look, let's not, let's agree for a second. Let's not get into a fight right away. Natalie Wood, let's just. Yes. What are we? She, she's just so hot. Yeah, I said that. She's hot. She's like the hottest. That's why I was, I was like, you I gotta feel like watch I gotta say more on the subject. <laughs> she's so hot, it's insane, and she's the hottest she's ever been in this movie. I also like. It's it's interesting to see a movie back then that's so scantily clad at times, right? Like, is I feel I mean I guess Last Picture Show it's like full bush and everyone's naked, yeah. but no, there's there just way more nudity then. I guess you're right. Yeah, but I'm that, like, in the seventies. Which we set this almost is, which I have a point about decades I want to talk about in a second. But in the seventies, like Scorsese talked about, he's like it was the reverse. You couldn't get a movie made without nudity. Oh, they really? were like, "Where's the nudity? We have to have nudity." Huh? There's nudity in every movie in the seventies. That light is correct, right? It's supposed to be red like that, right? I just freak out sometimes. Yeah, it's okay. ticking up. It's okay, recording. Cool, cool, cool. Oh my god, forty-one minutes. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, that's true. Everything, yeah, in the 70s, everyone has tits and a bush, and uh, it's great. But, yeah, Nollywood's amazing, um, and you watch a movie, it started out, and it's, uh, you know, you, they have that commune part where they're in the commune. It's, yes. it's, it's a little weird, but... It's funny, there's jokes. It's funny, but then the movie really gets funny in that, in that next scene. That's what I'm like, oh, this is almost like... This is almost like curb humor a little, you know? Yeah, there's a lot of curb in here, a lot of yeah. Woody. Paul Mazursky and, and Woody are very similar, and they're yes. friends, I guess. A lot of similar jokes. In fact, there's a joke in the movie that feels exactly like a, it would fit perfectly in a Woody Allen movie when they're at the party, and uh, Bob says, hey, there's there's Sammy Davis Jr., and yeah. Elliot Gould, uh, Ted goes, hey, there's, uh, you know, Bernie LaMady, and he goes, who's that? He goes, that's ah, a friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great Great bit, yeah. joke. There's great joke It is. I was surprised, because, like... 
you know, a lot of movies in the 60s, you don't expect it. I, I didn't expect it to be that funny. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm watching. I'm laughing hysterically. The, oh, the second scene, it's like it has that Alexander Payne kind of humor that's subtle where they're, they have that cult feel now. Right. And they're like all they have that glazed look and they're all just talking about the feelings and they're really annoying about it and it's hilarious and she makes the waiter uncomfortable yes and then she goes back to the waiter it's that it's that great joke of when like someone gets gets a little culty yes. you know and like and they're trying to bring everyone on board you know yeah you incorporate that you go to therapy or you start meditating you try to incorporate that into the th- like some people there's bits about it some people have that they're reading a book about whatever and they're like you know this is a little bit like Back when uh, Shakespearean time, because they yeah. just read the thing. They want to get it involved in the thing. Right. And uh, it's very funny. I just want to make a quick point about the yeah. decades, because I was thinking about this when I was watching this movie, or I was watching this other movie by Mazursky, Bloom in Love, which is crazy. we got to talk about that at some point. But when you're watching, it's from 73, and I'm like, this feels like more 60s than 70s. But you realize, retrospectively, you think of like, okay, this happened in the 70s, so it's the 70s. Yeah, it's all but made But like, up. we didn't... It's not like three years ago, all of society no, was like, yeah. fresh decade. Yeah, no, it's a... No, Here it's we a, go. It's, it's, a, it's now the 2020s. It's an arbitrary marker. Exactly. Yeah. Like, four years ago doesn't feel any different than it does now. No, yeah, it's an arbitrary marker. It's just like, yeah, things just slowly change over over time. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so... Yeah, it's very funny. And what's interesting about the movie, too, is like, it's not like... It's making fun of them, but also kind of like, Respecting what they're about, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. It is it is about this like sexual exploration at a time where the fifties were really prude and people are starting to like people are starting to experience. And there's a great line about it where the guy at the pool says, "You only you're only here for a couple seconds." You know what I mean? Yeah. So try to fuck everyone. And I feel that sometimes I'm like a lot of times I'm like I w- sometimes I'm like I wish women were like more loose and they just fuck me. But then I realize they are loose. They're just not fucking me. Right. You know, I, I wish they have that. But some of them are. Some of them are. You yeah. do okay. I do okay. I do some okay. Very attractive women under your belt. That's true. That's true. Belt, whatever. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Alan uh, Landsberg. Oh, the guy. Yeah, that was yeah. the name. Sorry, I have it written here. Yeah, so the, <laughs> the opening is hilarious. And, uh, and it does feel, like, you know, it feels Woody Allen-ish where it's like you have this other couple feeling threatened by I feel like that happens to every Woody Allen movie. Yes. One couple sees another couple make a choice. Usually in a Woody Allen movie, one couple is having an affair or something. It makes the other couple question their Yeah. yeah. And there's also this kind of wife swapping feel in a lot of Woody movies. Right. Like I want to fuck the other guy's wife. Uh um, and in my head that happens a lot. But so that first scene is hilarious. Uh the second scene is hilarious. And then it gets even funnier when he admits to the affair. I mean, that scene is is incredible. It's great, and there's that beautiful scene that's that's in there, and you kind of like, why is this in here? But it makes it 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 needs to be in there. The kid when he goes to talk to the kid, yeah. And the kid has the tiger because it feels like the comedy stops, the sex stops, but it it puts you in this world of a family with a child. There's yeah. this child in the other room, and it's a long scene well, of him putting his kid to bed. And it it feels like a feels very real. Like that kid is actually like very like. Everything he says is very like believable. You yes. Know what I mean? Yeah. And it's and it just goes to show this is a comedy, but it's not. It's also very real. It's a comedy, but like there are real moments, and it's like you feel like it's about real people. You know what I mean? It has it has that fun tone of a pain movie where it's both real and like kind of satirical. You know. Well, and I like the kid too because it feels like he also this is he's had an, in the movie he's had an affair on the road. And he's back, and he's going to tell his wife that he had this affair. But first, he has to put his kid to bed. And he keeps trying to put him to bed. The kid keeps having more yeah. and more questions. So he's just holding on to this secret. And it also sets up this thing where later, they're all talking about wife swapping, and they are wife swapping. And it's like, but they have children at home. And yeah. it's this thing of like, you are this parent, but you're still this sexual adult sexual being searching for yeah. sex. He literally put his son to bed. And then went in the other room and told his wife he had an affair. It's yes. like like the son is just seeing him as his like perfect father, right? And there's other things going on in the other room. And the scenes, I mean, there's two. To me, there's two really incredible scenes that are very long, like could be in a play. Mm-hmm. And it, the two, the, the first scene that's incredible is when he tells the affair because it is like you're watching a play. There's so much going on behind the dialogue. He says it, expecting her to get really upset. She doesn't. What makes which makes him feel really weird, right? And I mean, you kind of get a sense, maybe not fully, but you get the sense that the reason she's not upset is because it allows her to right. do 
fuck also, which is what she wants to do. Right, right. But then he's getting upset because she's not upset, so he's feeling unwanted because she's not jealous. Right. And then he's upset, which is hilarious. He's upset that she's not upset that he had the affair, and that's very funny. And then she wants him to tell you her about it, and you can sense she's getting turned on. It's a little, a little about the movie work, you know. Thing. Right. She's getting a little turned on by the story, and you're right. like, whoa, there's a lot of shit happening in this yes. one scene, you know? Yeah, and this is all like in the first third of the movie. Yeah. And then, of course, later he comes home, and she's had an affair, and which is a great scene where she's like, there's someone in the bedroom. Yeah. Which is, he comes home a day early, and there's a, some great jokes in there, and he freaks out and slowly settles down. And the whole thing is hilarious. I mean, when he's looking out the window, and he's like, is that his car? And she goes, yeah. And he goes, the Chevy? And she goes, the Maserati. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> but he puts his head down. Well, it's, it's the kind of comedy I love, which is, and it's just true in life. I love the comedy uh, where people try to live up to an ideology. Mm-hmm. But their instincts keep on betraying the ideology they want to live up to. You know, right. this is very much true in Albert Brooks, like Lost in America. He wants to be this new hippie, yes, and then he literally is going to kill his wife for taking away their like money. So it's like I love when you have it because that's what life is. You have this worldview, this ideology, and your body keeps on betraying it. So this couple has this ideology: we're free, we're loving it, we're fucking, but then they're instincts betray it he still can't help gets mad you know and they they have these feelings and he's i mean he resolves it but he's so mad at first you know what i mean right though i will say this i mean it would have been a different movie but i was kind of hoping it, it would have been kind of a great plot point if when he and i thought this is where they're going is where when he goes sees a guy inside and it was elliot gould i thought that's where they were going honestly and i actually think that would have been i mean it changed a little the direction of the movie but that would have been a pretty good plot point at that point uh it would have been good but yeah it would have been a totally yeah. different movie which is one of the people's criticisms of your criticisms what is that you're always just rewriting what a movie should be well i, I take criticism to the next level uh, <laughs> but that we would have lost the whole second half of the movie when yeah, it comes yeah, it would to have been that. I mean, that's the climax Did you think that? I, I guess that. i thought that's what they were going for right um there. no i didn't think that and i thought that scene works good because it's so funny it is funny. yeah when no, the no. guy and he's like a foreigner which is hilarious and he's a tennis <laughs> guy and uh, oh what does he say that's there's something so funny in here i took a note oh there's a great moment too that's actually funny but also kind of poignant when they're outside so she's having an affair and the guy that she just finished fucking is inside the bedroom and they're talking outside the bedroom and then uh bob says he's not my pajamas is he <laughs> like there's this sacred thing know, of like okay like, of he's not. fucked my wife but he's like he's not wearing my clothes <laughs> yeah. he hasn't taken my place and what i like too about the movie that makes it sp- oh, sorry sorry i just thought yeah, of the, yeah. joke. the joke is when he finally goes in and meets the tennis guy and he's like he's some kind of eastern european or something i guess and uh uh, Bob says we've been experiencing sexual freedom, and he goes, uh, "No, no, um, yeah." He says we've been uh, we've been exploring sexual freedom, and he goes, "I believe in that." And then the guy responds, "I know." <laughs> There's <laughs> some amazing, great, hilarious, great like, moment, great like joke. really like kind of modern humor. Like I mean, I guess those movies were. I guess it's, it's '69. Movies were hilarious back then. Yeah, but it does have some of that subtle kind of humor I expect for later on. Kind of, you know what I mean? In a way, it's just very like subtle kind of uh, humor, which I love. Uh, and I think what's so cool about this movie, if this was a '90s movie or something, it would just make them look ridiculous for having the sexual freedom, right? And ultimately, at the end, kind of support a more traditional view. But this is a '70s movie, so it's not fully making fun of them. It's like. No, these are cool things, the sexual exploration. It's just messy. Right. But the movie is not, the movie's very revolutionary hard. It is kind of saying, like, you know, it's not wrong to try to do these things. Right. You're just going to get into some messy places, which is an interesting thing to see in a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's a common theme they explore. I mean, they did it later in Seinfeld with Jerry and Elaine going, yeah. we're in there for a while. We're back out here. Yeah. And it's a fascinating topic, the thing of like how and how dramatic is sex really? Right. Is it that crazy if we went and had sex and then we got back together and everything went back to normal? And they finally go they find where the line is. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Elliot Gould is just, uh, puts on a magic show through this uh, movie. He is. He's so good. He was nominated for an Academy Award. It's his breakout role. I think he might be like, 
out of all the cool, like, kind of methody actors, or not methody, what's the like, supernatural. Yeah. He's the most supernatural Jewish actor, in my opinion. He's the one Jewish actor, like, like fuck Dustin Hoffman. You he's hate the, Dustin Hoffman. I knew you were going to say He's the one Jewish actor where I'm Hoffman. like, this guy is fucking natural. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, there's other, obviously, great Jewish actors, but, like, he's just from that time period. You know what I mean? He's just so fucking natural. He looks like Sam Morrill. I feel like I'm watching Sam Morrill the whole time. Um, but Sam's never been this funny on stage. <laughs> I mean, like, Sam ultimately, <laughs> pound for pound, funnier than Elliot Gould. Oh, well, yeah. But one of the best comics there is. You yeah. put Sam Morrill in this movie, he's not as funny as Elliot Gould. Like, Sam Morrill. He's going to be like. <laughs> well, I mean, Sam Morrill on an antidepressants. That's Elliot yeah. Gould. Uh, I mean, Elliot Gould is so funny in this movie. I mean, just, and I assume he's improvising when they go to Vegas and get the hotel, and the guy goes, uh, You're going to be room 934. He's like, 934. $100 on 934. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, Is that improvised? And it's I just think him being I think hilarious. I think the idea is. of you're so jacked up to go to Vegas that you're like, Give me $100 on room 934. I actually think maybe the that actor line you love is, or the famous uh, friend of mine line could have been improvised too. Friend of mine. Uh, that's that's Sammy Davis. Oh, right? oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Just um, sort of but so the other scene that's amazing. So that's the first scene with them too. And the other scene that's amazing, the chamber piece, is with him and his wife, Elliot Golden, him and his wife. I believe not that night. Oh, but that, that goes on forever. I mean, that goes on forever. But that is very one of the most, Woody, very Woody, but also in a way more honest than Woody because I've never seen like. Woody movies aren't that openly sexual. There, there's a prudeness to his movies. They talk about right. sex, but you never see it. But this is like a married man begging his wife to have sex. And I'm like, yeah. I've never seen this. I never seen this in a movie. I've only really, because I'm not married, I only learned about it really watching Curb when he wants to have sex and she doesn't. I'm like, oh, you can be married and get rejected still a bunch. Of course. And so like... He's begging like a middle schooler, <laughs> and it's a ba- he's just like, come on, let's fuck. Yes. And she doesn't want to. And he's like, come on, let's just fuck. And she's like, do you really want me to do something against my will? And he's like, yes. Like, right, right. Like he doesn't and care. then the feeling of like, oh, I gotta go for a walk. And she's like, I don't want you to go for a walk. And he's like, well, then I want to fuck. I know. Him jogging in place in pajamas. One of the is best. Hilarious. It's one of the best depictions of like a marriage. And the walk is just. Honestly, like a beautiful metaphor. Like, I want to see what what else is out there. Unless right. you fuck it. And she's like, no, just I just want you to stay in bed with me and hold me. And he's like, but we're not fucking. Like, right. it's just like it's so perfect. And then there's a lot and that feeling of like, well, just lay there then. Yeah, just, just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, just like, help me. And, and it's not judging. It's not saying men are pigs or women are like annoying. It's just showing we're sometimes in two different worlds. Right. And. And men can get desperate sexually. And then there's that line that I'm just like, such a perfect line when he finally wears her down and she agrees to it. And he goes, I mean, only if you want to. (laughs) No, it's great. And then when she doesn't have the birth control pill and she's like laughing and he's mad. It's just an amazing, it's like a scene from a play. And I think Paul Mazursky did a lot of theater and improv back in the day. And it's, it's a great, those two scenes are just so masterful. Great scenes and um, it's just great. Sorry, that's that's all. Yeah, I what have. are the other uh, notes? Um, oh, these are about Bloom and Love. Paul Pauline Kale liked the movie. I had that locked and loaded in case you didn't. Like it. <laughs> I was be like, well, you fucked up. Pauline Kale loved it. Um, of course, she loved it's it. It's also funny when uh, they're talking about. He tells the other couple about the affair, and then he goes. Uh, Wow, the affair. Who's the guy? He's like, oh, he's the so and so from the tennis club. He's giving me free tennis lessons, which is hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, and the funniest things in movies are always what you don't see. That at yeah. some point they negotiated know, free tennis lessons, <laughs> and this guy's fucking his wife and giving him free it's tennis so lessons. It's so funny. And, oh, we didn't even talk about one of the funniest parts, uh, which is so hilarious. When she has that revelation in therapy, and the therapist keeps on trying to get her out the door. Yes, that part is so. He's just like, that's our, he, that's our time, and she's like. Maybe that's it. Maybe I, I'm just not in love with him. He's like, <laughs> Let's discuss it next we'll week. We'll discuss it next week. And he's, it's framed well. He's like in the back and she's like having, it's like a monologue shot. She's like, yeah, could that be it? It's a great thing to discuss. It just keeps on going on. That guy's great. And he played Bloom and Love, his next movie, which I want to talk about at some point. He plays the therapist in that movie. Too. Chubby Rory, Rory Scovel. Yes. I texted that. I didn't get a. It was funny. Yeah. Sorry. Sometimes I'm living my life. <laughs> um, it's a lot of text. <laughs> Um, on the plane when she's getting undressed. She's not asking for much. It's a thumbs up, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, Diane, Diane Cannon is so good in the therapy scene. They're so yeah. hot. Um, anyways, it's all great. My notes are just Did jokes. you literally write as a note, they're so hot? Yeah. 
<laughs> Cannon and wood are so hot. Um, <laughs> <It's> hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, what uh, is this one? Uh, rip her blouse off. Wow. I don't even know what that is. I'm just writing down I don't, things. I'm not trying to be disparaging or anything. I'm just curious. I mean, but Natalie Wood is like, okay, maybe it's not great, but she is infinitely hotter than... Not infinitely, but 300 times. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Just it's it's sure. finite, okay. but it's, yeah, okay. it's, <laughs> okay, yeah. It's very, she's very hot. I mean, it's crazy. How why would she, she so, why would someone like murder her? She's so hot. Like, oh, she might be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know? I guess you're right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, or maybe she wasn't murdered. Yeah, I guess that's, uh, it, she was on a boat with Walken and Christopher Walken. Isn't it mm. funny that it's, yeah. Isn't it Robert funny Wagner, that yeah, it's killed her, I think. somewhat possible that Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken just murdered someone on a boat? Yeah. I mean, probably not. Christopher Walken probably wasn't involved. He might have been asleep, I think. I forget. Well, but what's the theory? Her, her and Robert Wagner were married, then divorced, then remarried, then she died. Oh, right. interesting. So, so the idea... You divorced her once and you remarried. Yeah. Her. Well, the idea is... And you remarried because yeah. she's hot. The idea is... I guess the theory is he got mad and threw her overboard, right? I believe so, yeah. But even if he got mad and threw her overboard, he could still, couldn't he still get her from the water? When he, like, even if it was like an angry, like... It's very mysterious, and uh, he probably killed her. Do you think Christopher Walken was watching? Well, it's not Christopher watching. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what do I know? It's all speculation. Where's Natalie Wood? Wait, hold I on. don't. Where is Natalie Wood? Where? <laughs> she was on the boat before. Did it, Mal? <laughs> we had three people before. Oh, God, I'm so terrible at this. Sometimes I can do it good. You know, if I have that way of impression. Like, damned if some. <laughs> well, I won't do that scene. But <laughs> <laughs> the most racist scene of all time. It's a boy, imagine! Scene. I hate to be that cliche person, but boy, are if you know we're like imagine that you know the this would never get away today. There are like a couple Tarantino scenes that are the most emblematic of that. You know, well, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I just I think we're gonna get to a point where like that won't he won't be able to get nominated, yeah, for an award because like, you can't nominate for an award. He wrote these things. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I mean he won for Django, but even that was. Ten years ago, I know it is. It is. Uh, it is interesting. I mean, imagine just now in right now, I s cast a black person in a movie, and I'm like, all right, uh, there's a character in it. He's gonna call you the N word a bunch, and I'm casting myself <laughs> in that role. Is that are you cool with that? I'm gonna right. be the guy. I wrote. Someone calling you the N word, and I just think I, I'm perfect for that part. Right, right. <laughs> like, like that's just like a crazy thing to like, you know. And then, and then the other scene with Dennis Hopper, where it's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your moment of heroism, your courageous moment, is just calling him the N word and saying he has N word blood in him. <laughs> yeah, but it's insane. Yeah, um, great director. Kind of annoying as a person. No, nah, he's great as a yeah, person. Yeah, you hung out with him. Um, but so... We sent him the movie. He hasn't uh, written anything back. No response? He it. Yeah. He could be busy. Yeah, he might just say that. <laughs> well, I, though I think he always watches movies. He always has, he watches the, three movies a day. We sent it really? to him like six months ago. Does he really? That's what he says. Three movies a day? Which we've, I think we've had this conversation. I've had it with other people. It's not crazy. It's like if you're, you're awake for 16 hours out of the day... So that's six hours. That's ten other hours. Like just, I spend five hours looking at my fucking Instagram account. That's true. Yeah, I guess I just think like you're not really outside much then, right? No. Here's the thing. I've broken this down before. Let's say you wake up at nine a.m. Yes. And you watch a movie. You watch a movie from nine thirty a.m. to eleven thirty a.m. Yes. Then you can go outside until five p.m. Watch a movie from five to seven p.m. Then you watch a movie at eleven p.m. to one a.m. Yes. You could be outside at the beach the rest of the time. But I will say this. I being a comedian, it's very hard to watch movies because you're kind of not. You you're can podcasting. Maybe, constantly. You're podcasting, but you're also like, you're also out during the time. Like, it's so much easier to watch a movie if you if you're staying in. Yes. Um. But uh. Yeah. I, I need but, to watch more movies. Man. But I think a lot of people, people talk like, oh, if you tell someone Quentin Tarantino watches three movies a day, people are like that's crazy. But then people binge. 
the I fucking know. wire in that's, two days. That's he crazy. Watched eight hours of TV. That's crazy. You got to watch four hundred hours of whether this man murdered his wife or right. not, and you don't find out at the end if he did. <laughs> and then also, we work at night. We're doing shows at night. That's a good point. If you're a director, you don't have shows at night. He can watch a movie from eight to ten, ten to twelve. He can watch movies all night. Yeah, that's a good point. And he, he obviously loves movies. I uh, movies to me are the new books. Like I watched a movie. I sat through a whole movie the other day, and I was like so proud of myself. Yeah, I didn't look at the phone. No, I mean. Honestly, at this point, I might have said this on the podcast, but at this point in our culture, watching a movie without looking on your phone should be considered a form of meditation. Like you should be like a form of meditation. It kind of is. It is meditative. Like you can breathe for like twenty minutes, or you can just watch a movie and focus the whole time. Well, that's the beauty of a film. I mean, uh, Sam Harris talks about this as an example of non-dualistic meditation yeah. is watching a film. Really? Because you've completely lost identity with yourself. You're up on the film with, screen with the but characters. But you can't have your phone around. Yes. Do you, well, that's my question. Do you watch movies without your phone? Yes. You? Okay, so that's, yes. Because yeah. people now, they'll watch a movie and look at the phone the whole time. You're not really watching the movie. Of course. You do that. I've watched a movie with you. It changed the way I look at you. Well, but that was a social, we talked about that. No, but multiple, gathering. a lot of things you've done. We've watched I, other things. I didn't watch, actually, I was watching the whole time. Well, that's because you're in the theater, but well, you were but spilling me. coke everywhere. <laughs> By the way, you see the, the trailer for the prequel comes out, came out today. Oh, that, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, that's the prequel. I was wondering who that girl was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pearl. Yeah. I'm excited, I'm excited to see it. That's funny. Um, I called Delta today, and the woman's name was Pearl. Really? That Sucks. is funny. Um, All right, let's wrap it up. Let's How wrap long it have up. Been going? Oh my fucking mother's tits! <laughs> <laughs> like, when, like when you have a girlfriend with herpes. Let's wrap it up. Oh yeah, let's guess. Budget. This. I'm gonna say three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Crazy. Well, now I feel bad saying are you crazy, but I'm gonna guess way lower. Uh hundred and twenty thousand. What? Two million. God, I feel like such an asshole. Yeah, yeah, you're stupid. <laughs> two million? Box oh, office, no. I'm going to say. That movie's all filmed in like one house. How is that two million? No, it's all over the place. They went out to the desert. Oh, that's right. They're, they're in Vegas. They're, they'd, they had to yeah. travel over to Vegas. They had to pay the actors. Yeah. Um, it's funny that our movie costs more, but adjusted, that's probably like a $10 million movie. Yeah, probably more. But um, the box office. Box office, I'll say probably higher back then. Eight and a half million dollars. Twenty two mil. Thirty two million. Wow, thirty two mil. That's four times what I guess. It's so That's funny. Back in the day, you used to be like, oh, the box office was smaller back then because of inflation. But now you're like, oh, it's much bigger than now because no one sees movies. In yeah, everyone went to see the movie. Yeah. Um, well, let's wrap it up. So where are you going to be? Uh, this week at Toronto, which is almost sold out. Just the uh, one show, uh, two shows. Second show is sold out. Then August is a big one. Des Moines, August 5th and 6th. Um, Nashville Zanies, August 12th and 13th. And then uh, Funny Bone, Liberty Funny Bone, August 19th and 20th. That's and Cincinnati, then, huh? Yeah. And then um, the movie's going to start streaming soon. Wow. In August. So when the movie comes out, please, for the love of Christ, go to louisck.com and... Buy it and get the get the extras. We're gonna have deleted scenes on there. We're gonna have behind the scenes stuff, a little vignette thing. We're gonna introduce all the deleted scenes. There's gonna be a whole commentary with Louie and I. It's gonna be very excited. So don't just buy the film, buy the 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 bonus. Yes. Great movie. It's gonna do great. It's gonna crush. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Uh, for me, by the way, someone came last week because they heard me, Cameron. Thanks for showing up at Bricktown Comedy Club. Hey, Cameron. I don't want to brag, but I'm getting like one fan per weekend. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's one? Yeah, That's more than most people. I mean, if it was any less, it would be nothing. That's a good point. <laughs> if it was any less, it would be nothing that I could be mentioning right now. Yeah. But, no, I get a couple more than one, but he, he introduced himself. I'll be at so Sam... three. <laughs> I'll be at Sandman Comedy Club in Richmond, Virginia this Thursday through Saturday. Come on out. It's going to be a good time. I did some press. Um, a guy called me up. I had to do, like, an interview. It was so great. Like, we ha he had two questions, and he was like, all right, that's good enough. I'm like, oh, amazing. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Um, he hated you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what that meant. The weekend after that, on August 4th through 5th, I'm going to be at Spokane Comedy, Spokane Comedy Club. And then on Saturday, <laughs> I'll be at Tacoma Comedy Club at 4.30 p.m. Uh, fucking... Um, 
Carlos Mencia is going to be doing the Saturday night show. We could clip it where you just said 4.30 fucking Carlos Mencia. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. He stole your spot. Yeah, he stole my spot, and I'm excited for his material the week after. It was like, my Jewish mother's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> She's so loud. Uh, but that was so, racist. <laughs> but, uh, and then Sunday I'll be at Tacoma Comedy Club again at night, and then you can see me at the Blue Whale Comedy Festival in Tulsa, Oklahoma on August 27th. And I'll be at the Toronto that you're the doing. Jew whale at the blue whale. <laughs> the Jew whale at the blue whale. Pauline whale at the blue whale. Uh, but uh, what's my thing called? Pauline. Oh Pauline yeah, Pauline whale. whale. Yeah, that is yeah. what it's called. Shout out to that guy. Yeah, funnier than anything I've ever said. And uh, and so yeah, in September. Oh, I'm, I'm back. At, I guess I don't have to go all the way to September. But uh, I'm back at comedy on state. September wow. 23rd through 24th, baby. Oh, that's huge. Catch me there. And uh, I think my special's coming out. People have been asking. It's going to come out in September. I was going to put it out in August, but I feel like people are out in the summer. They're like, you know, right? Better to do it in August. Yeah, we had this conversation. All right, so yeah. September, I think it's going to be the first couple weeks of September. <laughs> I do agree, but I also always think it's funny, the idea of people being like, um, hey, Ron on special came out. Eh, it's August. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to watch it. It's probably not true. We're yeah. not going to watch it. Yeah. yeah. I think it'll be fine either way. But I know what you mean. I get it. But September. September's hope. August is like we're all melting, it's global hot. warming, climate change. Climate change ends after the summer. And uh, so, yeah, uh, my special will be coming out. I'm really excited. I can't wait. It'll be on my YouTube channel. And hey, you didn't see it live, so you can uh, yeah, feel I'll, obligated I'll to uh, no, watch I can't, it. I can't wait to watch it. Will you watch it? Yes, I'll watch it. Oh, that means a lot. I will, I'll probably have a thing here. So, uh, so yeah, so come on out, and uh, we'll be back next week. Hopefully, we'll be watching uh, Nope next week. Yes. So, uh, so we'll talk about that. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you all for watching, and... Um, we'll see you at the movies. <laughs> that our thing? We'll see you at the movies. Cut. It's Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> Cut. Joe likes Scorsese, and Ranan is Jewy. It's Joe and Ranan. Talk movie.